trusted news source, ABC6 News at Noon. It's a simple choice. We can wear our masks or we're all going home. A short and explosive meeting of the North Kingstown School Committee after people in the audience shouted down members and refused to follow the school's mask policy. That meeting then shut down early and the police called in to clear the crowd. ABC6 News reporter Laura Puglisi is live with more on what happened here, Laura. Well, Doreen, school committee members say they're only enforcing the governor's mandate that masks be worn inside the school building. The meeting was held at North Kingstown High School, but people there didn't want to wear one. The CDC does not know about this virus. I know more than the CDC, so just carry on. A chaotic scene unfolding at North Kingstown High School after the school committee meeting is shut down early for people in the audience refusing to wear masks. We've asked a couple people to leave who wouldn't wear a mask and at this point we do have two people in the room who are not wearing masks. So again, as, as we mentioned before, we won't be able to continue the meeting until people are complying with the mandate issued by the governor regarding the wearing of masks in school. Gregory Blasbald, chairman of the school committee, calling it a chaotic and potentially dangerous atmosphere, saying people in attendance loudly spoke over speakers, threw objects, and took over the microphone without being recognized. Yeah. What about the American Disabilities Act? Medical exemptions? Religious exemptions? If she was eating, it would be okay. After several attempts, the chairman called an end to the meeting, saying in a statement to ABC6 News, the members of the school committee felt that it was not safe for the meeting to continue, so we voted to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. What is the name of your attorney Aye. so Aye. that we Aye. can Thank prosecute? You. Police were called in to clear the crowd. No arrests were made. This comes during a wave of disruptive and unruly school committee meetings across the country. The U.S. Attorney General recently sending out a memo warning of a disturbing spike in harassment, intimidation, and threats of violence against school administrators, board members, teachers, and staff saying the FBI is working with federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies to discuss strategies to address it. And right here at home, police say they're not aware of any threats that were made in this meeting and that once they showed up asking everyone to leave, they did so on their own. It's not clear when this meeting will be rescheduled to. For now, reporting live in Providence, I'm Laura Puglisi, ABC 6 News. Today, new COVID protocols going into place at all Newport Public Schools, including a new vaccine mandate for all staff. Casey Camps joins us live in the newsroom with more on that this afternoon. Casey? Yeah, Doreen, starting today, it will now be required for all staff at all Newport Public Schools to be vaccinated. If they're not, they'll need to provide a negative PCR test every week. The superintendent saying in a statement that she encourages everyone that is eligible to get the vaccine to help keep in-person learning uh, going and to keep everyone safe. Again, this new policy is now in effect there. And that's not all either. The superintendent also announcing that they are adopting new, more relaxed guidance from the Department of Health and Education regarding students showing symptoms, still being allowed to be in school. It used to be if they showed any COVID symptoms, no questions asked, they then should not go to school or would be sent home. Now, symptoms are based off of a scale of major and minor. Any one major symptom, cough, loss of taste or smell, or shortness of breath, you'd be sent home. Or any two minor symptoms, headaches, sore throat, fatigue, etc., you would be sent home from school. All of this comes after we told you about the Cambridge School District of Massachusetts requiring vaccines for all eligible students there to participate in athletics or after-school activities. It goes into effect on November 22nd and covers all children ages 12 and older. The superintendent there is saying the vaccine is, quote unquote, the best tool in defeating the virus. We'll keep you posted on that. Live in the newsroom today, Casey Kantz, ABC6 News. All right, Casey, thank you. And amid national supply chain issues, the Bristol Warren School District's lunch service is warning of menu changes. Chartwell says frequent menu changes are likely because of product substitutions due to constrained supply. The company says it's changing its ordering schedules to allow for more time to get out of stock product in advance too. Students with allergies are being told to check in with the cafeteria manager to make sure that the menu is accurate. Because of the product substitutions, the food won't always be what was listed on the menu. And those national supply chain issues are taking center stage in Washington today. President Biden meeting with CEOs and leaders of the nation's biggest ports. 
The White House and many businesses are already warning about higher prices and shipping delays this holiday season. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has more. A renewed effort by the White House to sort out supply chain bottlenecks that are throwing a wrench into the economy ahead of the holidays. As the country recovers from this once in a century pandemic, uh, and economic crisis. The private businesses that make up our supply chains and get goods to businesses and the American people have struggled to keep up. President Biden is set to meet today with major retailers and suppliers, including Walmart, UPS and Home Depot, as well as the leaders of the nation's two busiest ports, which are suffering from record breaking backlogs of container ships. And what happens with the railroads in the Midwest and the warehouses across the country affects the number of ships that everyone sees out here in the harbor. Strong consumer demand combined with shortages across the supply chain from shipping containers to truck drivers to factory workers means many Americans aren't finding the products they want on store shelves. In order to keep your shelves full, we have to order eight weeks in advance, eight to six weeks. It's a logistical headache that both small and big businesses warn will get worse during the busy holiday shopping season. Basically, what I've been telling people to do is start shopping early, uh, even be before Halloween. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen tells CBS Americans should expect some shortages and higher prices during the holidays, but she's cautioning against panic buying. I think there's no reason for consumers to panic about the absence of goods that they're going to want to acquire at Christmas. The White House announced today the Port of Los Angeles has committed to operating 24-7 to try to reduce congestion. Big retailers and shipping companies are also pledging to expand their hours. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Meanwhile, President Biden will be in New England later this week. The president visiting Connecticut on Friday. He'll travel to Hartford to promote his Build Back Better agenda. He'll also pay a visit to the University of Connecticut campus for a dedication ceremony. This is President Biden's second visit to Connecticut this year. He also spoke at the Coast Guard commencement ceremony in New London back in May. And now it's time for the weather this afternoon as we take a live look over Providence with our sky cam right now. It is another warm day out there today. I don't mind you being a broken record this week, Jill. <laughs> I really feel like one this week, but it's not a bad broken record, I guess, because we have more sunshine. We have another day with temperatures well above average for this time of year. Currently sitting in the low to mid 70s in the Providence area. Beautiful sunshine out there with a breeze coming in out of the west southwest right now around nine miles per hour. That breeze from the southwest is going to keep us slightly cooler along the immediate coastline today. Currently sitting at 68 in Westerly, 69 over Block Island, 67 in Newport. But as soon as you get away from the southwest coastline, you do see those temperatures into the low to mid 70s. And again, it's just a really beautiful afternoon. A few degrees warmer right now for most locations compared to where we were yesterday. Satellite radar image shows you sunshine for Rhode Island and southeastern Mass. Some clouds off to our west. You'll see a few clouds passing through at times. Fair weather clouds, really. Overall, another very dry day, another nice, mainly sunny day with those temperatures almost 10 degrees above average. We have partly clear conditions overnight. Temperatures will stay mild, and tomorrow is more of the same. I do have changes in the seven day. I'll have much more in just a few minutes. Doreen? Hey, Chelsea, thank you. Now to an ABC6 update on a murder in Rhode Island's capital. Providence police say they will not have an update today on the search for the suspect in the city's 21st homicide of the year. A man was shot and killed while doing laundry last night on Broad Street. Police say the man was shot around 8 o'clock last night at Laundromat. Police say the suspect put a gun to the victim's back demanding jewelry. There was then a fight between the two and the gun went off. The suspect fled on foot. Well, coming up here on ABC 6 News at noon, police in Rehoboth are looking for four golf cart joy riders who badly damaged a country club green. Those details coming up. And a local state senator proposes a new bill in the Mass State Senate to give service dogs better treatment on the job. How he's trying to bolster their care next.
ABC 6 News at noon covering some of today's headlines now and police in Rehoboth are looking for at least four people accused of breaking into the Hillside Country Club and causing thousands of dollars worth of damage. One of the suspects they are looking for, they say police actually, there were two males and two females who stole the three golf carts and drove them onto the course, causing the significant damage to both the carts as well as the greens. Eight batteries were also stolen from a utility vehicle that was parked on the property. The country club is now offering a $2,500 reward for any information that leads to an arrest. And a local state senator is hoping to create new protections for canine officers. Massachusetts State Senator Mark Montigny's bill is called Nero's Law, named after Yarmouth Police Sergeant Sean Gannon's canine. Montigny represents parts of New Bedford, Dartmouth, Fairhaven, and Acushnet. Gannon, a New Bedford native, was shot and killed responding to a call in 2018. His dog Nero was shot and severely injured. The law would authorize EMS to transport working dogs and ambulances. Nero had to be taken by police cruiser due to policy, and that delayed his medical treatment. The bill is now headed to the full Senate for a vote. And the Supreme Court is set to today review a lower court opinion that wiped away the death sentence for the Boston Marathon bomber Jahar Zarnayev. He was originally sentenced to death in 2015. Last July, a federal appeals court ruled that Zarnayev should be given a new penalty phase trial to review his death sentence. The Trump administration asked the Supreme Court to review that decision, and the Biden White House concurred. And today is the last day to register to vote if you want to vote in New Bedford City Council election. City Hall will be open until 8 p.m. today to accommodate registrations. They'll be handled by the Board of Elections there. The New Bedford City Council will discuss early voting dates at its meeting tomorrow. All six city councilors plus at large spots are on the ballot in November. RIPTA will continue public hearings today on proposed changes to winter service. RIPTA says one proposed change would add a route from Warwick to North Kingstown. Hearings will be held in Warwick today between 2 and 4 and 6 and 8 at City Hall. There's a hearing in Woonsocket tomorrow. The first hearings were at URI Memorial Union in Kingston last night. The CEO of Pawtucket-based Hasbro Toys has died just two days after going on medical leave. Brian Goldner had been undergoing treatment for cancer since 2014. He was the CEO of Hasbro for 13 years. Brian Goldner was 58 years old. And we're hearing some local reaction to Goldner's death today. Pawtucket Mayor Don Grebian tweeting, My deepest sympathies and condolences to the family of Hasbro CEO Brian Goldner. I'm very sad to have heard that he's passed. His leadership and willingness to innovate will be missed. Our hearts go out to his friends and family. And we turn now to our coverage of the coronavirus. And the U.S. is easing travel restrictions for fully vaccinated visitors from Canada and Mexico. The first phase starts in early November. It allows people traveling for non-essential reasons to cross U.S. land borders if they show proof of vaccination. In January, the second phase begins. That will extend the vaccine requirement, so it also includes people traveling for essential reasons. Well, coming up here on ABC 6 News at noon, the Red Sox headed to the ALCS, and we now know their opponent and the schedule. All those details after the break. And Chelsea has another look at your full seven-day forecast. Stay with us.
A boil water order now extended through Thursday for some southeastern mass communities. We're talking about Mattapoisett, Fairhaven, Marion, and Rochester. Positive E. coli test results were found in samples collected on October 5th. Residents will be informed when it's safe to stop boiling their water. And now, your ABC6 Storm Tracker weather with meteorologist Chelsea Priest. Guys, it's another beautiful, beautiful day across southern New England. Sunshine for pretty much all of us. A few fair weather clouds coming in and out of the area. And those temperatures are mild, even at the coastline, where we are feeling just a little bit cooler because of the wind direction today. It's hard to imagine that it is still fall. We're starting to see those leaves change, uh, shorter amounts of daylight. And right now, we're definitely seeing some patchy colors out there. We see a lot of those trees changing already. We're looking at at peak, if not just past peak, for areas farthest up in northern New England. England uh, near peak for much of the northern half of New England, excluding that coastline of Maine, the coastline of Massachusetts, and of course here in Rhode Island and much of Connecticut. So still a little ways to go before we get into really peak conditions, but it is still fall out there, even though it hasn't quite been feeling like it. Low to mid 70s outside right now, 60s along the coastline. Again, the breeze from the southwest is keeping us a little bit cooler for our coastal locations. Typically this time of year, warmest temp of the day for Providence should be in the mid 60s. So we're well above that once again. Again, that breeze coming in light, but out of the southwest keeps us cooler in spots like Westerly, Newport, right along the Rhode Island coastline, Block Island as well in the upper 60s, but even upper 60s for coastal locations above average for this time of year. In the Providence area, we're topping out in the mid 70s today, 10 degrees above average. We head into tomorrow, even a couple of degrees warmer, mid to even upper 70s tomorrow. Another day with a lot of sunshine. We get into Friday, you're going to see a few more clouds outside. Temperatures will still be in the 70s. Even more clouds on Saturday, still in the low 70s though. That's ahead of an approaching cold front. And once that cold front comes through on Saturday, with more clouds, breezy conditions, rain, even a few rumbles of thunder possible, as that clears out into Sunday, that's when you're noticing more seasonable temperatures starting to settle into southern New England. Satellite beta image is quiet. You're seeing clear conditions outside, high pressure and control. That means sunshine for most of us. There's a little system passing to our north. Any rain showers stay to our north. You'll see a few passing clouds coming through in the afternoon. Overnight, partly clear, but overall big picture shows you some pretty quiet conditions across much of the northeast, the really eastern half of the country at this point. When you're looking at across southern New England today, clear conditions expected, a few passing clouds at times. Overnight will be partly clear, perhaps some patchy fog, but another mild night, another great day tomorrow. It won't be until tomorrow evening as the sun's setting that you see some clouds thickening up. On Friday, I do have more clouds in the forecast. Not completely overcast, a partly sunny day, but certainly more clouds than what we're seeing today and what we'll see tomorrow. Quick update on the tropics for you. We have that one area that the National Hurricane Center is watching north of Turks and Caicos now. A very low chance of this developing. So again, good news there. Things are still very quiet in the Atlantic Basin. What you're looking at today is mostly sunny conditions. An overall nice day, mid 70s in Linigan with the breeze from the southwest, a few degrees cooler along the coastline. Some patchy fog overnight. I don't think it's a widespread issue, but we will be dealing with some fog out there. Temperatures in the low 60s. And then for tomorrow, you're looking at mainly sunny conditions, a warm day, highs in the mid to upper 70s. 70s again on Friday, a few more clouds out there. We wait on that approaching cold front on Saturday, mostly cloudy conditions with rain arriving for the afternoon and evening hours. Breeze picks up as well much more seasonable through that second half of the seven day forecast. Dory. All right, Chelsea, thank you. ABC six news at noon covering the Red Sox playoff chase and the Sox now know their opponent in the American League Championship Series. The Houston Astros easily took care of the Chicago White Sox with a 10 to 1 win yesterday to advance. The Astros had a better regular season record than the Sox, so they'll host games one and two of the ALCS in Houston. This represents a rematch of the 2018 ALCS when the Red Sox beat the Astros in five games. The teams are off for a few days. Game one, first pitch in Houston, set for just after 8 o'clock on Friday. Coming up here on the news at noon, a liftoff. William Shatner headed to space with Blue Origin. We'll take a look at the launch when we come back.
Captain Kirk himself, William Shatner, flew to the edge of space just a short time ago. The Star Trek actor was one of four people to lift off in a Blue Origin rocket from a remote area of West Texas. The flight was originally supposed to happen Monday, but was delayed because of high winds. Shatner played Captain James T. Kirk on the long-running hit TV series Star Trek in the 1960s. He's 90 years old. There is an adventure in my life that I would not have had had I not done this. And it looks like there's a great deal of curiosity about this fictional character, Captain Kirk, going into space. Shatner officially becomes the oldest person to travel to space. This is Blue Origin's second flight with paying customers on board. We're going to check back in with Chelsea for one more look at that afternoon forecast when we come back. Stay with us. All right, welcome back, everybody. We're taking a look right now. The big blue bug going incredible Hulk in a cosplay for a good cause. Nibbles went away, transformed into the Hulk for Rhode Island Comic Con. In a ceremony happening tomorrow, the original Hulk, Lou Ferrigno, will be on hand. The big blue bug will make a donation to the Rhode Island ALS Association in Ferrigno's name. It's just, just too perfect, Chelsea, between Comic Con coming and Halloween. Oh, how could you not? I drove by it last night. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been vaccinated because he lost the mask and now he's dressed right. up for Halloween. Clearly was I love vaccinated. It. I love Thanks. it. It was really great. It's such a nice It's icon. fun. It I is. know. It yeah. really is. Uh, we are looking at another beautiful day outside across southern New England, mainly sunny. Temps in the mid-70s, inland a few degrees cooler at the immediate coastline. Even better tomorrow, a few degrees warmer. Still nice on Friday, waiting on that cold front on Saturday. We'll have rain overnight, cooler temperatures beyond that. All right, Chelsea, thank you. And thank you for joining us for the news at noon. The news continues first to four. We leave you with a sky cam look. I think in the distance, <laughs> you can see there, all dressed up.